Hi, this is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Today I want to talk about trade, or specifically about trade and the important export restrictions and why we have them in the first place. I mean, after all, shouldn't the world be full of free trade? Well, the truth is there really is no free trade and there's many reasons why there are different types of trade restrictions. I want to talk about this because I feel like this is sort of a bit of a timely topic. As I've seen it in my you know, last 20 or 30 years where I've been working in global trade, when I first started out, there weren't that many really that restrictions or issues. It was actually relatively easy it seemed like being able to especially import things into the united states but over i would say the last 10 years or 15 years you know it started becoming harder and harder there's different types of restrictions that have been placed on especially on countries like china when china first opened up you know everything was pretty much free and easy there it was very easy to export out of Today, it's a much harder or much difficult thing, especially to a country like the United States. Yes, China does continue to export a lot to the United States still, but there are many regulations and other things which are placed upon products from China into countries as the United States. So here are some reasons why countries will say we're going to have trade restrictions. You know, whether or not these are actually, you know, correct or not, they are some of the reasons. Number one is probably protectionism. They believe that by doing so, they can protect the home economy. You've seen this a lot, specifically in Asia. I remember years ago when I lived in Thailand, very expensive to import anything from the United States into Thailand. In fact, you know, we were importing some furniture and furniture had like 100 plus percent tax on it. Why? Because the Thais felt that they were protecting the Thai economy at the time. So this type of protectionism is not just with the United States, but can also be with many types of other, um, you know, many types of other countries. That's why when you go overseas, many times buying a foreign car can be very expensive because there's protectionism issues placed upon cars and automobiles. So cars can become extremely expensive, especially an imported car. Um, another reason could be that they want to safeguard public health and safety. You know, safety can come first in what we, you know, we eat, what we wear, and use daily. So governments can enforce standards to say that a product needs to be of a certain standard. You know, this can especially be true for things like toys when it comes to things that children might use or children could put into their mouth. When it comes to things as food, things that we may eat, um, things that we can wear, or, you know, things that would go onto our body, such as, you know, maybe creams or other things. All of these things which can be imported, um, you know, into a country, a country will usually have some type of restrictions on of exactly, you know, what their local standards are and that companies that are working on that need to be able to meet or exceed the local standard. You know, also there's restrictions on things like vehicles or electronics or, you know, that, that's why when we, we ship lamps to the United States, the lamps need to have a UL certification. Why? Because then, you know, the lamp, um, you know, has gone through a certain type of safety testing standard and it's just easier to import and sell it into the United States with that. Another reason could be for preserving the environment. They, um, you know, countries may put up restrictions for preserving the environment. This is really starting to happen a lot now, especially as there's new regulations now with the UN and Europe and other places about sustain sustainability issues, about the environment issues, which many European um, countries are starting to comply with. And this, you know, has become a big deal for many parts of Asia that need to start looking at all of these different things in order to be able to export their products to those countries. So, you know, it could be, you know, things that, re, you know, environment plays a huge role. There's a lot of concern, especially in many parts of the world, about the environment, about climate change, about, about um, you know, all of these things that are happening where, where, you know, storms are happening, other things are happening because many people believe it has to do with the environment and climate change. So many countries are starting to have regulations that start to regulate that uh, more. Um, you know, to combat, you know, pollution, to combat um, use of plastics, to all of those different things they're starting to look at more and to say, what can we do to change this? 
Another reason why a country may have regulations on would be they want to support their own strategic interests. They, um, you know, every time a trade barrier goes up, a lot of times it's not just just for you know for the fact that it's going to you know protect the local economy or anything like that. It's really for strategic interest. When um, President Trump was president of the United States, he put many tariffs on goods that were made in China. In fact, everything that was made in China. Since that time, those tariffs have not come off. I don't know how many jobs it's actually brought back to the United States. I my guess is not very many because in all of my years and experience where I've seen these protectionism measures, it hasn't really, in my opinion, brought that many jobs back to the United States or other places, especially in my own industry. Because, for example, you know, there's just not people in the United States now who maybe want to make furniture, who want to weave furniture products, who, who want to, um, you know, hand paint a vase. There's the people just are not there that are doing that in a huge way to make an impact on this. In fact, if you want that type of product, you need to find it in Asia. So country, you know, companies, instead of moving you know, back to the United States, a lot of them instead moved to Vietnam, moved to Indonesia, moved to the Philippines, moved to India. So, you know, in a sense, these protectionism issues that a lot of countries put on, it doesn't necessarily mean the jobs are going to come back to their own countries. It just means it's probably going to shift to another location. Another reason is that governments want to, you know, encourage fair trade practices. If they feel like there's unfair trade practices, there's problems with, um, you know, the intellectual property laws, um, you know, all of those type of things that, that a, um, you know, country may, you know, start to, um, you know, put, you know, put trade restrictions on one country because of this. You know, an example of this, of course, has been the United States and China and a lot of their trade wars that's been going on recently where the um, U.S. has felt there's unfair trade practices going on from China or there's the violation of, inter of, of intellectual property rights. So even though your industry may not be involved in that or not be involved in the trade wars, you can basically end up with extra tariffs or other things being placed upon you, and you can essentially remain in the middle of it all. You know, so what are some ways that, um, you know, that countries will, you know, that they'll, that they will do the type of restrictions. And I'll just kind of go through this very quickly. We have a, a really good blog post that our author, James Johnson's written on this, which goes into a lot of detail, which will put a link below in the description, but it's about, um, you know, um, anti-dumping or, um, countervailing measures. I've, I've watched a lot of anti-dumping in my, in my time, especially, um, years ago, there was anti-dumping with the bedroom furniture industry, where several of the um, large furniture companies took out an anti-dumping um, against China. But I don't know of any of them that really have been are building furniture today in the United States. First of all, there's just not the workers, and second of all, um, they they're 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 all buying from overseas. So you know, China's got this anti-dumping placed upon it, which you know hasn't really brought back the workers as people have said that it would. But anti-dumping is one way that a lot of, you know, companies and uh, countries may use to do anti-dumping, saying there's unfair trade practices going on here, and that this will mean that there'll be more duties placed upon it. Also, my own experience with the anti-dumping, which happened years ago with the bedroom furniture, was that a lot of the major, um, major, major factories, the larger factories, were able to hire the lawyers in the United States to be able to get a very small duty placed upon the products exported from their 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 factory it was the smaller factories that were producing what i would say higher quality goods that were not dumping at all that were that really you know were not selling at necessarily the cheapest price but were selling high quality that ended up hurting and they could no longer sell that type of product because they simply didn't have the lawyers so you know one of the problems with a lot of these trade restrictions is that maybe the big guys win and the little guys do not uh, there can be you know, problems on intellectual um, property protection could be another reason why. Uh, there can uh, companies, a country can put on, they can re, you know, prohibit or restrict certain types of goods. 
uh, that they can, um, you know, restrict chemicals. They can restrict other things of other other goods, other goods to come into a certain um, country. Or they could not allow you, like an example of the United States, with what's happening now with some of the chip the chip manufacturers, that they cannot be allowed to sell certain types of chips into China either. Um, you know, the computer chips. So, you know, it can kind of go both ways. Governments can put regulations on both ways. Um, they can, um, there could be international sanctions that are happening. Could be another reason why maybe trade will um, become an issue. There could be, they could put on quotas or licensing, only allow so many uh, products in. You know, so all of this, of course, can impact um, international trade in a lot of ways, can make it a lot more harder, can make it more difficult, can just mean that, you know, it can um, affect, you know, all the global supply chain. And, and what I've seen, you know, a lot of these protectionism measures, you know, the big companies a lot of times are able to weather it. They're able to be the ones that are able to make it through. They've got the teams, they've got the money, they've got, you know, in, in many cases, they've got the lawyers, they're able to fight it, they're able to get special deals on things. It's usually the smaller guys, the smaller guys like you and me, um, you know, many of you that might be out there listening, that we're the ones that maybe hurt a lot from these different regulations. And that's really what it comes I mean you know comes down to you know that even though they're meant to protect a country or protect other things my you know my main question is whether or not they really actually do I'm not totally against all regulations but I haven't seen where many of these regulations have um, been effective and worked as well as they could have I'm going to put a link in our description to this blog post, which is quite interesting on understanding import and export restrictions. Um, we, you know, there's a lot more detail, a lot more information on this. If you'd like to go read more about it, and um, you know, and and we hope that you know this is important for anyone who's in the global supply chain to be able to understand, because these restrictions can come on at any time, and if they're going to come on, then you're going to have to be prepared for it and decide what you're going to do or how you're going to be able to survive through it. This is Anita from the Global Trade Gal. Thank you so much for listening. We hope you'll subscribe to our podcast. If you're listening on YouTube, you'll subscribe to our YouTube channel. We'd love to have you be part of our community. We'd like to thank our technical team that's put this together. And thank you, all of you, our listeners. Mm-hmm.